Uh, my name is Jacob Goodson. I'm Assistant Professor of Philosophy at Southwestern College in Winfield, Kansas. Uh, my book is Strength of Mind, subtitled Courage, Hope, Freedom, and Knowledge. There's still hope, right? And that's, that's the point of the book is to say um, what we've been trained to do uh, in graduate school is to form our students intellectually. And so I started thinking about what it means to form students intellectually. And I, I decided that I was going to, to defend and that my vision for higher education was that we could uh, form intellectual virtues in our students um, and that we could strengthen their minds uh, while they were in college uh, as a way to, to uh, approach ordinary life and approach their, their adult life. And so the, the, two virtue, the two intellectual virtues that I defend are, are courage and hope, and I defend them speci specifically as uh, intellectual virtues instead of moral virtues. Courage is, a, is an intellectual virtue in the sense that it's, uh, it, di it displays a power of the mind. So in his book, The Philosophy of Right, the modern philosopher G.W.F. Hegel argues that soldiers need to cultivate intellectual courage as a way to affirm the contradictions that they face within warfare. So one of those contradictions, for instance, is um, autonomous decision making, but also learning how to be a part of the, the, the machination of war. Another contradiction is um, self-protection, but also willing to sacrifice yourself, um, even to the point of death, for one's comrades. And so I agree with Hegel that, this is a, that courage can be an intellectual virtue in the sense that it affirms contradictions. But I, I disagree with Hegel that we have to limit this to uh, to soldiering. And I argue that in the 21st century, uh, educated citizens need to learn how to cultivate intellectual courage by affirming the contradictions that we face in our daily lives. And so the, the first one of these contradictions would be um, uh, very much like Hegel said, it would be uh, autonomous decision making, but learning how to be part of the machination of one's own company or one's institution, right? And then another contradiction uh, would be um, learning how to um, get the, the salary and the security that's due to you, but also learn what it means to, uh, to sacrifice the, based on economic market demands and based on uh, the capitalist structure of, 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 of the, 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 the top people being the wealthiest. Um, and so these are contradictions that I think we have to uh, come to terms with in our, in our everyday existence. And courage becomes an intellectual virtue that allows us to come to terms with those contradictions. Hegel calls this a formal virtue because it's a, it's a formality of the mind that allows the mind uh, to be powerful in times that seem to be out of control and chaotic. Uh, so h again, his context is war. But in the 21st century, it seems like just given the economics and the political landscape that we're facing similar everyday chaos. And so I argue that courage is the way uh, as an intellectual virtue to get through that, the, the, the daily experience of chaos that we, that we have in America. And that, um, and that we as professors can help our students cultivate this intellectual courage by naming the contradictions that, the, that, that, that they're going to have to face as adults and by saying that they can affirm both those contradictions even if it seems like, uh, even if it seems like they're, a, they're an either or option, that they can be both affirmed. Um, in terms of heroism, uh, I argue that one of the, the um, points of higher education, especially the liberal arts experience, is to prepare students for, or, for ordinary life. And here, heroism is always connected to the extraordinary. And so uh, one of the main points of the book is to show that we shouldn't be teaching our students uh, to have unrealistic and unreasonable expectations about what they should be doing, and that we should uh, be teaching them to learn the wonder and the significance of ordinary life, and that heroism uh, demeans and distracts us from ordinary life, where it's, it's, it's a way to escape ordinary life. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attempt to get out of ordinary life and, and to do the extraordinary. So I, I argue that since courage is the virtue that leads to and makes heroes, that we need to understand courage as an intellectual virtue instead of a moral virtue, because when, it, when it's understood as a moral virtue, then that's when it leads to the, the need and the desire for heroism. And so in order to help our students uh, see the significance and wonder of ordinary life, 
uh, I make a strong argument against heroes and, and, and heroism, um, which I hope will be one of the, the, the controversial features of the book. And, and people say, how can you be against heroes? Everyone loves heroes. But I want to say, well, heroes actually takes us, it, it wants us to escape ordinary life. It wants us to seek the extraordinary. Uh, and I think, that's, I think that's problematic and very troubling. So I borrow Paul's phrase from the Book of Romans, uh, hope against hope, to argue for intellectual hope against theological hope. And my reason to argue against theological hope is that I think it's, uh, within the Christian tradition, it's, it's tended to be escapist, both escapist in terms of um, having our hope in an other world um, and, and an other worldliness, but also in terms of, ex uh, also in terms of being futuristic and, and neglecting the present. And so uh, spatially, I argue that intellectual hope uh, helps us be grounded in the relationships we have around us and, 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 and a type of presence that we need to have and maintain around others. And then um, temporally, I argue that um, hope shouldn't be understood futuristically, but intellectual hope allows us to uh, live into the moment and, and to understand who we're supposed to be um, at every single moment. Uh, and so hope helps us better understand ourselves if you understand it from, a, from an intellectual perspective. As an intellectual virtue, I argue that hope can achieve a golden mean between two different types of extremes. Uh, so first, uh, hope achieves a golden mean uh, between uh, despair and optimism. And we can have an intellectual hope that helps us avoid um, both sort of a wishful thinking optimism uh, about ourselves and the world, but also uh, helps us avoid falling into despair about the world. I also argue that hope is a golden mean between impatient progressivism and a kind of cynical nihilism. And I think we're seeing that in our politics right now in America, um, kind of this, this um, you know, sort of leftist impatient progressivism that we need to achieve everything now uh, or else this country is just going, uh, is, is not who it's supposed to be. And then you have, uh, on, I think on the right, a kind of very cynical nihilism um, where, where politics can't do anything. And I think we need, right now, we need to actively be teaching our students that there's something in between those two. And I argue that intellectual hope uh, provides exactly the type of intellectual virtue that we need uh, to counter impatient progressivism and, and cynical nihilism. And so I hope that in terms of my readers, um, not just thinking about what the purpose of higher education is, but I also am I'm hoping that my readers get a sense that um, there are some third ways right now in the world. Our, our world seems so uh, not only chaotic, but so divided. And so I'm, I'm trying to use courage and hope as two intellectual virtues that um, uh, provide a, 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 a third alternative to, to the extremes that we're seeing in society right now.